so welcome to lecture 4 and in this lecture we are going to talk about uh, some numerical examples on DC machine types and EMF equations so in the earlier lecture uh, we had uh, listed out various types of DC machines and like separately excited dish machines, self excited dish machines, long shunt, short shunt, series and all these kinds of DC machines so that different types of DC machines we had seen and also we had seen the EMF equation so let us just quickly ref refresh so what is the EMF equation for the machine so if you look at the machine what comes to your mind one is the poles so the DC machine has the poles and the more number of poles are there the more flux will be there so therefore EMF generation will be more so P is directly proportional so I put P in the numerator similarly N is the speed of the machine phi is the flux of the machine so as I as I rotate the machine faster the rate of change of flux linkages will be more and eg will be more similarly as each flux so phi is here flux per pole and p is the number of poles so p into phi is the total flux so even that also will be more and there is a 60 in the denominator which is just converting the speed in revolutions per minute by 60 you will get speed in revolutions per second so that's the constant and then another constant we had was z by a so emf so z is the total number of conductors but of course all the conductors are not connected in series so therefore uh, the certain conductors are divided into parallel paths so if there are four parallel paths then all the conductors like 400 conductors if they are there four parallel paths so each path will have only 100 conductors so therefore the voltage will be proportional to that actually so therefore that's why this will come and this was the expression for emf generated in the machine and then uh, different types of machines we had seen so for example shunt machine will look something like this uh, so of course our armature resistance will also be there and then there is a load so we have seen shunt this is h and then we, we had seen series and then we have seen compound and in compound it will have both series and shunt windings it will have long shunt and then short shunt so let's let's continue so we now what we'll do is we'll solve a series of problems which combine uh, these two concepts so i, I might use both this uh, circuit and then the emf equation and then try to solve some problems so let's move forward so here you can see an eight pole dc shunt generator so this is example number seven and previous examples we solved in the previous lecture so let's do that so you can also try attempt your solution yourself and you can compare your solution with my solution you can pause the video now and you can try it and let me also solve this problem now so example 7 an 8 pole DC shunt generator so poles are 8 and then DC shunt generator 800 wave connected armature so Z is 800 and since it is a wave connected parallel paths are 2 running at 600 RP 600 RPM so therefore speed is 600 RPM supplying load of 12 ohm resistance at 60 volt terminal voltage so RL load resistance is 12 ohms and then the terminal voltage is 60 volts I am just writing down the data that is given armature resistance is 0.25 ohms so 0.25 and the field resistance is 250 ohms so I will define it as RSH 250 ohms find the armature current induced find the armature current comma induced emf and flux per pole so let's see so uh, it's a dc shunt generator so it helps in drawing the diagram so this is a circuit diagram so this is a dc shunt generator load resistance is 12 ohms and uh, the load voltage is 60 volts so therefore the load current will be nothing but division of these two so 
60 divided by 12 so that will be 5 amperes so here I am sure I will be getting 5 amperes 12 into 5 is 60 what about the field uh, current so this is 250 ohms so the field current maybe I can calculate so the voltage is 60 volts so ISH shunt current or IF will be voltage 60 divided by 250 so let's calculate what it is so 60 divided by 250 so 0 0.24 amperes so here I am getting 0 0.24 amperes of current so simple Kirchhoff's current law at this point will give you what is IA so armature current is nothing but 5 plus 0.24 so I'll get 5.24 amperes this in turn will give me the drop in the armature resistance so this is 0 0.25 given in the question so therefore IARA will be the drop so let's calculate that so 5.24 multiplied by 0 0.25 so let's see how much we get it so multiplied by I'm sorry so 5.24 multiplied by 0 0.25 so I'm getting 1.31 volts so this much voltage is dropped here so therefore the total voltage is 60 the voltage drop is this so now I can find what is the EMF uh, EMF induced in the machine so that is EG is nothing but 1.31 plus V so 61.31 volts which is nothing but V plus IARA now EG also I can know from a different formula because in the question flux per pole is also asked so EG is nothing but phi z n p by a into 60 so i keep changing the order but uh, don't worry about that so from this i can find the flux so what is flux per pole so that is nothing but eg into 60 into parallel parts divided by n into z into p so i have all these values so eg i just calculated 61.31 multiplied by 60 multiplied by a so what is a so here I had written a is 2 and n is 600 just remember these values 808 so two parallel paths speed was 600 conductors were 800 and the poles were 8 poles yeah so therefore now I can find what is the flux so let me again use the calculator so I have 61.31 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 2 then divided by I open the brackets so 600 into 800 into 8 so I'm getting 0 0.0019 So I'll, this is in Weber, so I'll, I'll round it off to 2 millivebers. So this is the answer. So I hope you learned something from this problem. That is, we had to find induced EMF, we had to find the armature current, we had to find the flux per pole. All these things we had formed. So that is the solution for this problem. So let's move forward and let's do one more uh, question. This is example 8. So in which a separately excited generator is given. So again, uh, it helps to draw the diagram. So I, I draw the separately excited uh, generator. So there is a voltage and sometimes there is a variable resistance. So by, just close this other one. So by changing this resistance, which is <coughs> in series, I can control the current in the field. So that is the idea. A separately excited generator when running at 900 rpm so let me also 
so this is RA and this is the EMF generated EG so this is plus minus a separately excited generator when running at 900 rpm supplies 180 amperes at 120 volts so this is 120 volts and it is supplying 180 amperes to a load what will be the load current when the speed of the prime mover drops to 760 rpm okay so here n1 is 900 rpm n2 is 760 rpm when the field current is unchanged so field current is not being changed so therefore flux is constant flux is unchanged take take the armature resistance so ra is 0 0.04 and total brush drop two volts so let's first calculate the drop here so what is the iara so in the previous case 180 amperes uh, multiplied by 0 0.04 so that will be 180 multiplied by 0 0.04 7.2 volts and here this is 120 so therefore eg will be 127.2 volts now we know that so this is eg1 let me denote it as so emf generated eg is proportional to flux and speed so we had uh, earlier seen that so if i if i just go up quickly so in this formula so if you see ka multiplied by flux into speed so the poles are constant you cannot change the poles of the machine suddenly number of conductors you cannot change parallel pass you cannot change 60 is also a constant so if i take this entire term and denote it as k then k into phi a you will get it so this is a uh, one more thing that we get from it so therefore uh, i can write here eg1 is equal to phi1 n1 by eg2 equal to phi2 n2 but then here the field current is constant therefore flux is constant i can just consider these two are equal so therefore this is the relation i am getting so therefore what is eg2 eg2 is nothing but eg1 multiplied by n2 by n1 so therefore 127.2 and now the current speed is 760 rpm so here you see speed is reduced to 760 so as speed is reduced even the emf also will be reduced so what is that so let's calculate this 127.2 uh, multiplied by 760 and divide by 900 so this is 107.41 so now eg2 is less now with this eg2 what will be the load current when the speed so for that first i find the load resistance so what is the load resistance load resistance is nothing but voltage of the load by current of the load so voltage of the load was given to be 120 so 120 volts by current is uh, 180 amperes this is before the case so that is 120 divided by 180 so i get 0 0.67 ohms therefore total resistance now if i look at the circuit so i have eg2 is equal to il into ra plus rl so therefore i will find il something like 107.4 divided by 0. Point, what is the ra 04 04 plus load resistance is 0. 0.67 so this will give me the new load current so 107.4 divided by 0 0.04 plus 0 0.67 151.26 amperes so the current also has reduced so i think now let's uh, continue with example 9 so here is example 9 on your screen 
so you can try it yourself and you can also check your answer with my answer so let me start answering this question so what do i have a four pole lap one dc generator so p equal to four lap winding means parallel paths equal to poles which is equal to four useful flux per pole of 70 millimeters so flux is 0 0.07 webers or 70 millimeters armature winding consists of 220 turns so here you should be careful with this term turns see one turn will have two conductors so you, you remember so there is this one conductor and this is another conductor so one conductor is this and the other conductor together it becomes one turn so armature winding consists of 220 turns that means z is nothing but 220 turns multiplied by 2 so that will be 440 is the value of z and having resistance of 0 0.04 ohms so each having so each turn so resistance per conductor resistance per turn is 0 0.004 ohm so therefore resistance per conductor will be half of that so 0 0.002 ohms but what exactly is the armature resistor ra so armature resistance is nothing but total resistance of the armature of course that's what is the uh, name suggest but how is the armature constructed so armature is constructed like this so there will be how many parallel paths? there will be four parallel paths and here how many conductors are there so this is the four parallel paths and then finally this will be the armature so this is a and a representing the starting and ending terminals of the armature four parallel paths are there now each path consists of how many conductors so 440 conductors are there so each path will have 110 conductors so 110 conductors 110 conductors and 110 conductors and what is the resistance of each path each conductor that is 0 0.02 so what is the total resistance so let's first calculate this so if I use my calculator 110 multiplied by 0 0.02 so it will give me 2.2 ohms so each one will be 2.2 ohms so therefore by 4 I have to divide to get the RA RA will be 2.2 by 4 because 4 parallel paths are there so let me do that divide by 4 so I'll get 0 0.55 ohms so this is the trick part in this question of determining what is the armature resistance all right so calculate the terminal voltage which is running at 900 rpm so speed is 900 rpm with armature current of 50 amperes so ia is 50 amperes so first i want to find what is the emf generated so emf generated is nothing but phi z n p by a 60 so the flux that is given 0 0.07 total conductors are 440 and the speed is 900 divided by number of poles we have a four pole machine with four parallel paths so this will give me eg so Zero point zero seven multiplied by four forty multiplied by nine hundred divided by sixty. So four hundred and sixty two is the uh, induced EMF. So from this there will be a drop, IARA drop. So that will be 
here IA is given to be 50 amperes and the resistance is given is calculated as 0 0.05 so 50 multiplied by 0 0.55 so 50 multiplied by 0 0.55 that is 27.5 it looks it feels rather large so let's once again check so 110 into 0 0.002 so it's actually 0 0.22 not 2.2 so this is 0 0.22 so therefore this will be 0.22 and therefore this will be 0 0.055 so i'm just uh, following on correction so how do i know where i made a mistake is that i got this volt 27 volts of drop but typically armature drop will not be so high uh, compared to this so then i i got a doubt whether i made a mistake so that way you can actually do some self correction so this will be 0 0.55 so Obviously, this will be 2.7 volts. And is there any brush drop given in this question? So it's not mentioned anywhere. So therefore, I can find the terminal voltage. So will be EG minus IARA. So that will be 462 minus 2.7. That is 459.3, I guess. So this is the final terminal voltage of the, this thing calculate the terminal voltage when running at 900 rpm so that is what was asked so i think uh, we had finished that part of the question so i hope your answer is matching with my answer so let's let's uh, look at the next question here is the next example that is example 10 so again you can uh, attempt this problem so and check your answers with mine you may pause it and try it yourself so let me attempt it myself. So answer for this. Let's see what's given. A separately excited DC generator when running at 1000 RPM. So again, there's a 900 RPM also. So let me write N1 is 1000 and N2 is 900. Field, this is field, spelling mistake. Supplies 180 amperes at 110 volts to a circuit of constant resistance. So load current is 180 amperes and load voltage 100 volts what will be the current speed is dropped to 900 rpm and field current is reduced to 80 percent so flux 2 so the, the moment field current is reduced that means field itself is reduced field current and flux are proportional so is nothing but 80 percent of flux 1 so or phi 2 by phi 1 is 0 0.8 so this is what is given here armature resistance ra is 0 0.04 ohms and brush drop is 2 volts so we'll consider that so first thing what i would like to do is find the emf induced so how to find the emf induced first iara so will be 0 0.04 multiplied by 180 amperes because this separately excited load current is exactly equal to the armature current so so let me calculate that 0 0.04 multiplied by 180 7.2 so 7.2 volts is the drop i am getting all right then brush drop is 2 volts so therefore emf generated will be the total output voltage plus the drop in the armature plus drop in the brushes so 109.2 volts is the emf generated so let's denote it as eg1 so now uh, we know that eg proportional to product of flux into speed so therefore from this i can write eg1 by eg2 equal to phi1 by phi2 into n1 by n2 so in this everything is known except eg2 so because phi2 by phi1 is 0 0.8 so phi1 by phi2 will be 1 by 0 
Similarly, n1, n2. So, n1 is 1000, n2 is 900. So, I can write that. So, this is 1000 and this is 900. And eg1, we just calculated 109.2. So, eg2. So, from this, uh, I would like to find what is eg2. So, eg2 will be Okay, so first I will calculate the right hand side. So I get 1000 divided by 0 0.8 divided by 900. So that quantity, I am getting this one. This I have to make the inverse of it and then multiply it with 109.2. So I am getting 78.624 volts. So this is expected. On one hand, the flux is reducing. On the other hand, the speed is also reducing. Therefore, EMF will definitely reduce. So that is 78.6 volts. So now, under this new EMF, what will be the current if the speed is dropped to such and such value? So now, uh, what is the load resistance I should know to calculate the current? So I think it, it helps if I draw this circuit. This is a separately excited. So, this is VSH and this is ISH and this is the field resistance. Anyway, since this is constant, we don't have to worry about that now. So, I have something like this now. So, 2 volts will be the drop in the brush. I am generating 78.6 volts and the remaining, uh, the load resistance and uh, armature resistance which is 0 0.04 and then what is the load resistance so from the previous results i know what is the load resistance because il is 180 and v is 100 volts so v by 180 will give me the load resistance so which is 100 volts divided by 180 amperes 0 0.555 ohms this is the load resistance so now if i if i add these two i'll get the total resistance in the circuit so now based on this i have to find so effective voltage that is coming out of armature is 78.6 minus 2 volts so i'll get 76.6 volts uh, that is coming here that divided by so the current i will be 76.6 volts divided by total resistance 0.04 plus 0 0.555 so let's see how much it is so to this i'll add 0 0.04 and then i'll take the inverse of it and then multiply it with 76.6 so i'm getting 128.6 amperes So this is going to be the load current or armature current. So I think this concludes this problem. So I hope you understood uh, how, how we are solving this kind of problem where separately excited DC generator is given. So kindly uh, review this yourself. We'll do more problems. Uh, let's look at example 11. So this is actually uh, a problem taken from electrical technology volume 2. Uh, example 26.20a so in fact other problems also are kind of uh, derived from the same book electrical technology volume 2 so any power any standard electrical machines textbook will have many many examples like this so i strongly encourage you to apart from seeing my videos you can also uh, get hold of a nice um, electrical machines book and look at the chapter on DC machines and DC generators and all. Like this, you will find uh, several problems. So you can just for practice solve them. So speaking about practice, now we have this example 11 on, on your screen. So you can pause the video now. You can go through the question and you can try to solve this. And you can check your answer with my answer. So meanwhile, let me uh, begin my answer here. Four pole DC shunt generator, shunt field resistance. 
so DC shunt generator. So let me begin by drawing the shunt generator diagram. This is the armature resistance I'm just showing outside. And this should be a load. A four pole DC shunt generator, so P equal to four. Field resistance 100 ohms, so this is 100 ohms. Armature resistance 1 ohm, so this is 1 ohm. Flux per pole is 0 0.2 Weber's. If the load resistance is 10 ohms, so here the resistance is 10 ohms. Connected across the armature terminals and the generator is driven at 1000 rpm so speed is 1000 rpm so the terminal voltage is not given in this calculate the power absorbed by the load so the terminal voltage maybe we will have to calculate that so let's uh, do that so first let's find the eg emf generated so that is nothing but flux p n so here this information is also given z by 60 into a so z is here it is given 378 wave connected conductors so parallel paths will be 2 so whenever it is a wave connected parallel paths is 2 whereas lab connected parallel paths will be equal to the number of poles so anyway so i have all these uh, quantities now so 0 0.02 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 378 divided by 60 multiplied by 2. So this will give me the EMF generated. So let's do the calculation. So 0 0.02 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 378 divided by 60. So again divided by 2. So I'm getting something like 63. So 63 seems to be quite uh, less number. So let me once again check the calculation. 0 0.02 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 378 divided by 60 divided by 2. So overall it is coming to 63 volts. Oh, I forgot to include P. So that is the problem. So again, you in this video, you are seeing a lot of error checking. So the P is four poles. So here also I have to multiply by four. See, because typically a generators will have like 200 to 300 to 400, that kind of voltages. So suddenly 63 volts generator seems quite less. So that's the doubt I had. So 250 volts looks correct. So 252 volts is the EMF generated by this. So let me write it here 252 volts. So brush drop is not mentioned. So there's no drop in the brushes. So therefore, uh, if I, because the voltage is not given, so we'll have to assume, so let the terminal voltage be V. So if the terminal voltage between, there's, there's a three parallel paths now. So between any two parallel, between any two, if I consider the voltage as V, so this is V. So then what is the current here? Current in the load will be V by R plus current in the shunt field winding will be V by 100. So will be equal to current in the armature winding. So how do I know the current in the armature winding? So total voltage, so 252 volts minus the terminal voltage divided by the armature resistance will give me the See the voltage drop here is nothing but V minus 252 minus V and divided by 1 will be the armature current and the armature current will be equal to the voltage. So this is basically KCL. So the, level, the KCL is the entire thing. This particular term is the KVL. KCL and KVL together are used to get this particular relation and this is one unknown and one equation so I can find what is the value of V. So let's shift this V to the other side. So divide by 1 I can simply ignore. So I'll get V into 1 by 10 plus 1 by 100 
plus 1. So this minus v go to the other side become plus v is equal to 252. So so let's from this I can find v. So let's let's do that. So so first I'll I'll calculate 1 divided by 10. I get this plus bracket open 1 divided by 100 bracket close so I get up to these two terms plus 1 again so I get 1.11 this entire thing will go to the denominator so I do 1 by x for this and then multiply it with 252 so I'm getting 227.02 so or I'll just mention this implies voltage is 227 volts so once I know the output voltage, what is asked in the question? Calculate the power absorbed by the load. So the load current will be load current will be V load by R load. So that is 227 by 10, 22.7 volts. So therefore load current load power will be V into I, that is 227 into 22.7. So that will be into 22.7 that will be 5153 watts so this is the output power I'm getting so this is similar to the other problem but slightly there is a kind of a trick where without giving the terminal voltage uh, it is being asked so if you come across any problem where terminal voltage is not given so remember this example and you will be able to uh, handle it properly Now let's do example 12 and again you can try this problem yourself. So a 12 pole, sorry a 6 pole, it's not lab connected, it is lab connected. So this is, should be P. So a 6 pole lab connected, so I can right away write P equal to 6 and A equal to 6. DC machine has armature resistance of 0.18 ohms. So armature resistance is 0 0.18 ohms and generates 100 volts on no load at rated speed. So EG is 100 on no load at rated speed. Okay. Determine the armature resistance when the same machine is rewound using wave connection. What will be the no load voltage of the at the rated speed. So let's do this. So now there are six parallel paths. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. These six parallel paths are combinedly together giving a RA resistance of 0 0.18 ohms. So now when I do rewinding, I rewind with two parallel paths. So that means actually what I'm doing is the six parallel paths I'm just connecting them in series and then this will become one parallel path and then this also connected in series and then this will become another parallel path so I connect this two and this is my total uh, total armature now so this is A and A starting and ending of the armature so this is what is happening when I convert a six pole lap winding to six pole wave winding and obviously you see so what is going to be the RA here so this is 0.18 multiplied by 6 because if I if I want to find the resultant it will have to divide by 6 so here it will be 0.18 multiplied by 6 again it is multiplied by 3 so each part will have that so total will be <coughs> I'm sorry into 3 so each parallel path will have this resistance and total two parallel paths are there. So now if I just divide this whole thing by two, I'll get the RA. So uh, RA with wave winding for the same conductors and same machine. So that will be 0.18 into 6 into 3 divided by 2. So each path, each branch will have, let me just, I'm just verifying the total resistance is this. 
so each branch will have that and then into three will be this and then divide by two yeah i think it looks correct so this will go three times so 0.18 into 9 is is the answer 0 0.18 into 9 so 1.62 ohms once again 0.18 into 9 sorry So 1.62 ohms is my new RA value. But then what happens with the EMF? You see, earlier the no load EMF used to be something like 100,000, sorry, 100 volts is induced between these two. That means each branch you will get 100 volts. So here 100, here 100 and here 100. So total now voltage will increase by three times. So no load under wave winding will increase by three times so this is uh, this is your concept of uh, converting a lap winding to wave winding so i think no load voltage at rated speed and then wave connection all right so this is uh, this example so let's do one more example so that is example 13 so again you can uh, have a try at this and then see whether you can you can uh, address this. So let me solve now. A DC generator has armature EMF of 100 volts. So EG equal to 100 volts. When flux per pole, uh, I think for this problem, I'll denote this as EG1. Then flux 1 is 20 millivebers speed is 900 so n1 is 900 rpm so calculate the emf generated when speed so this is basically a very easy problem so we know that eg1 by eg2 will be flux 1 n1 by flux 2 n2 so emf is proportional to the product of flux and speed so n2 is given to be 1000 rpm and same flux so phi 2 is nothing but phi 1 so therefore uh, i can cancel these two and then find eg2 so from this eg2 will be eg1 into n2 by n1 100 into 1000 by 900 So triple one point one one volt. So this is the answer to the first question. Speed is nine hundred rpm. So now again the speed is going back to the same, whereas flux is twenty three millivebers. So n two is again nine hundred. Sorry, now I'll say n three, and phi three is twenty three millivebers. So therefore, e g three will be e g one multiplied by phi 3 n 3 by phi 1 n 1 so from that I, I'll just calculate that so eg1 was 100 and flux is now 23 millivebers and speed is same 900 so again 900 speed and the original flux it was 20 millivebers So this millivebers will cancel, speed will cancel. So my answer will be 100 multiplied by 23 divided by 20. So it will be 115 volts. So this is just an application of uh, this relation to solve this problem. So I hope you are again getting something from solving these problems. Let's do more. One more example problem. This is example 14 and uh, let's try to do it ourselves. Okay, so what do we have here? A four pole generator, so P equal to four 
induced EMF of 250. So EG is already given. So 250 volts. When driven at the speed of 380 RPM. So speed is given 380 RPM. Armature is lap wound. So again, so lap winding. So A equal to P equal to 4. Has 652 conductors. So Z equal to 652. The armature resistance is 0 0.15 ohm. So uh, the moment you see armature resistance, that means the problem is going into electrical parameters. So first, given all these things, I can immediately see that with this information, I can find what is the flux. So let's do that. So flux per pole is how much? So to, to find that, so I'll use EG equal to flux into N into Z into P divided by 16 into 8. So this relation. So from this, flux will be EG into 60A by NZP. So 250 into 60 into 4 divided by 380 into 652 into 4. So this 4, 4 will get cancelled. So let's calculate this. 250 multiplied by 60 divided by 380 divided by 652. So I'm getting 0 0.0605. 0 0.0605 Webers. Or I can write it as 60.5 millivebers per pole. So this is the flux per pole. Now, what is there in the question? The armature resistance is 0.15 ohm. The pole shoe has diameter of 50 centimeters. Each pole substance an angle of 60 degrees at the center. So it is something going into the construction. So what is a pole shoe? So just imagine that this is a machine and this is a pole. This is the pole shoe. So what is the purpose of this pole shoe is first it will distribute the flux uniformly across a larger area and another is if I have a winding here it will protect the winding from uh, moving so it will provide some kind of a uh, mechanical support here so the winding cannot move down. So anyway so what is given in the question is the, the, res the pole shoe has diameter of 50 centimeters so the diameter of this is 50 so this total diameter is 50 centimeters so therefore from center the radius will be so this is diameter radius will be 25 so that's a different thing each pole subsumed angle of 60 degrees so if I if I take the center this angle is 60 degrees so from that I can find the length this arc length of the pole the length of the pole is 25 cent so it, the depth in other words, the depth it is given. So this is 25 centimeters or 0 0.25 meters. So determine the flux density in the air gap. So in order to determine the flux density, I need to know what is the total flux and total cross-section area. So how to find the cross-section area? So cross-section area will be arc length. So if the diameter is 0 0.5, what will be the perimeter? Perimeter will be pi d. But only 60 degrees I have to consider. So into 60 by 360. Uh, I have to take that. So only one sixth it will be considered. So this will be the length of the pole. Or let's say uh, width of the pole. Wp. So pi d into 360. Uh, so pi diameter is 0.5. 60 by 360. So let's see what it is. So clear. So I have pi, this multiplied by 0.5 meters, multiplied by 60, divided by 360. So I'm getting 0 0.26178. So 0 0.262 I'll, I'll take it as meters. So this is the width of the pole. Then length of the pole is 25, so 0 0.25 centimeters so therefore area of cross section of the pole will be width of the pole into length of the pole so that will be 
point two five into point two six two or just to this I'll multiply 0.25 so I'm getting 0 0.065 meter square so now I have the total flux so flux density is nothing but flux per unit area so flux is 60 so or 0 0.0605 divided by and this one is 0 0.065 so it might be slightly less than 1 so let's do that I, I do the inverse of this so 1 by x and then multiply it with 0 0.0605 so I'm getting 0 0.924 Tesla so this is the flux density of the pole so this is a problem where it is slightly going into the construction of the machine. So but then finally we got the answer. So this is the answer. I hope you understood something from this problem. So similarly I think in this uh, entire uh, one hour lecture we had seen uh, multiple problems. So each problem is trying to bring out some concept of EMF uh, generation and then based on the conductors, based on the poles, based on the lap winding or wave winding, how the EMF varies with speed. So all these relations we will try to uh, highlight using this particular uh, series of problems. So in this entire lecture 4 we had only looked at uh, numerical examples. So let's continue this in the later videos. So I hope you are finding this useful. So if you find uh, this useful kindly subscribe to my channel and you will find more uh, videos in future. Thank you so much.